uh, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. And most of our young people have never been to Texas before. And so this is a new experience for us. And young people, just out of curiosity, how many have never been to Texas before this trip? All right, so uh, you can see we're, we're getting the culture. And um, I was telling your pastor yesterday, we were coming in, we, that's when we crossed the state line from Louisiana into Texas, and uh, we had a little bus trouble. And we were on the side of the road for a minute, and uh, this feller came up and he says, well, well good afternoon. And uh, just started chit-chatting with us, and uh, he, he said, everything okay? And I said, well, yeah, everything's good, and we're, we're fixing it. And he says, well, he said, um, right over here in this house is Ed. Now, if you need anything, you know, Ed's got tools, just go knock on his door. And he said, if Ed's not home, then his parents live over here in this house. And I tell you what, he introduced me to the whole neighborhood, and I knew everything about everybody just on the side of the road. So uh, I'm loving the Texans and how uh, courteous and hospitality-minded uh, you are. And so we're excited to be here, and uh, we are from the state of Florida. And I'm sure many of you have been our way, but we don't get out your way as often. And um, so we've been looking forward to being here tonight for some time. Time. And I um, want to thank the church for just a couple things real quick. First, thank you for the meal. And uh, we were able to eat right before the service, and uh, we had Rudy's Barbecue. I don't know who Rudy is, but he can make some mean brisket. He did a good job, and uh, it was really, really good. And um, I was I had the opportunity to eat with the pastor, and um, you know he he had seconds, and so I had seconds, and I should have stopped after the first. <laughs> but uh, so if if I start really breaking out into cold sweats tonight when I'm preaching, you know what's going on. My blood pressure is rising from all that brisket I ate. Uh, but uh, so we thank you so much for that, and then also thank you for uh, being able to to move your service from Wednesday to Thursday. And I know that's not always easy, uh, but we, man, we really thank you for that. It gives us the opportunity to be in as many churches as possible uh, while we're away from Florida. And so it's very, very kind of you. And, uh, and this is a good crowd for a Thursday night when no one's used to being here on Thursday. And so we appreciate that. Uh, we are on what we call tour. And so we left on Sunday and uh, we were in uh, the panhandle of Florida and then we were in Alabama and, and then moved into Texas yesterday. And, and we'll continue on and be in Texas throughout the rest of this week. And then Sunday we'll be in Oklahoma and then back into Texas and we'll kind of make our way back home through Mississippi and Louisiana and a couple other churches. And so we'll be out about 15 days in total and uh, counting uh, Sunday school and the different churches that we'll be in, we'll, we'll do 14 different services in those 15 days. So we try to pack in as many as we can. And so that's why it's very, very great for uh, you folks to, to move your service for us to be able to come here and share with you about who we are and what we're doing. I trust tonight's gonna be a blessing to you and and um, uh, I, I, in fact, I can almost just guarantee you that you're going to receive a blessing tonight from the young people as they sing and they give their testimony. So buckle up and be ready uh, because I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do. But let me just share with you a little bit about our ministry. I think it's wonderful that you're able to see the DVD uh, so I don't have to talk quite as much to introduce who we are. Uh, but we were founded in 1968 uh, in the state of Florida. So almost 50 years now. Uh, we've been rescuing children from situations of abuse, abandonment, neglected, uh, orphaned, and, and just children that maybe are struggling with the family situation. Uh, they're, they're not juvenile delinquents. They're not court ordered to our home. Uh, they're just good kids that come from a, a bad background, a rough background. And so a lot of them, their parents maybe have addictions to drugs or alcohol or maybe in and out of prison and uh, mental health issues. And, and some of them are, are genuinely good people that, that love their children but just can't care for their children for one reason or another. Maybe it's a financial need or a health need that prevents them from being able to care for their children. And, uh, and then there's also some that their parents have passed away. They're true orphans. And, and uh, their uh, family isn't able to or aren't willing to bring them into their home. And so they end up at Hope Children's Home. And uh, Hope Children's Home is a ministry where, first of all, of course, we, we take the children in and we care for just their basic needs, uh, their food and their clothing, their shelter. We put a big emphasis on, on a, a Christian education. We have our own school on property that's just for our children, tailored for uh, the needs of our children. We put a big emphasis on education. Um, but that's not where we stop. That's, that's just the basics. Those are the things that we just need to do. And, and to be honest with you, if that's all we did, then um, you know, we might as well just send the children to a state facility because they can, they can provide most of that. Uh, where our ministry comes in and differs is, is that we, our goal is to reach these children for the Lord. 
And so we see many, many, many of our young people come to know Christ as their Savior, and they grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And we try to raise them just like a good Christian family ought to raise their children. And so we attend church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, soul winning. And we go to a great church in Tampa, Southside Baptist Church with Pastor Kerry Nance, and we're under his leadership. And uh, the, they're fully involved in the youth group. We uh, have family devotions. And again, just basically try to raise them the way that a good Christian family uh, wants and ought to raise their children and uh, just just so happens that instead of having three or four or five children in our home we have uh, currently we have 88 children in our home we just do it on a much bigger scale and so even like when we go to church um, you know my family I have four children and my wife and I there's six of us we hop in our minivan we head to church uh, when we go as a, to church as a ministry we hop in three or four buses and a 15 passenger van and we head to church that way and so uh, just just the same family structure that you have a lot of ways uh, is our ministry and we just do it on a much larger scale and so that's in a nutshell who we are and what we do uh, a couple exciting things going on right now down in Tampa we're in two building projects in Tampa we're building cottages uh, to care for more children and uh, uh, just a few years ago um, our ministry had always been structured where we had a boys dorm and a girls dorm on property and the boys of course went in the boys dorm and the girls in the girls dorm but a few years ago the Lord laid it upon our hearts to start uh, what we call the cottages of hope and that's it's a smaller setting a smaller building and a family will live in there and care for up to about 10 to 12 children in a, in a smaller setting and it's enabled us to keep siblings together where a brother and sister may have been separated by a dorm uh, now they're able to live underneath the same roof but it's also enabled us to, to effectively care for the young children that we get um, we travel travel with uh, relatively older children it's easier on the road we have little Kevin raise your hand real high you'll see him in the front row later uh, Kevin's our youngest he's six uh, on this trip uh, but our youngest back in Tampa right now is is uh, 10 months old and so we have them uh, all the way from infants uh, through seniors in high school and so those cottages allow us to take care of uh, the younger babies uh, more effectively could you imagine being a house parent in a boys dorm let's say you had 20 25 boys and then all of a sudden you got a 10 month old baby boy to take care of on top of that so you got everything from 10 month old and diapers and not sleeping through the night to help them with calculus or geometry homework for the seniors in high school there's quite a spread there so the, the cottages have allowed us to uh, to effectively minister to those young ones as well and so we're building two more of those cottages currently as we speak and so that's exciting each cottage has 12 beds so that's 24 more beds and before we finish these two cottages um, before they're complete here in a few months we've already had someone come forward and say they want to build a third one and fund it for us and so most likely before we even open these two cottages that we're building we're going to start breaking ground on a third cottage and so the Lord's blessing the Lord's sending more children our way and uh, what that means is that that means that we're able to to see more lives change for for the, go the gospel of Christ and we're able to see them grow and, and do wonderful things um, a lot of our children if they're with us long term uh, we help them get through college as well and uh, maybe you'll hear tonight from maybe a senior uh, that could share their college plans with you but we help them through college financially and try to get them through college just like a parent would and so we have several uh, uh, college students at Pensacola Christian College Heartland Baptist College uh, West Coast Baptist College and and uh, in other places as well and so um, that's what it's all about seeing these children come in from rough or, or situations maybe where things weren't are, where they ought to be to knowing the Lord is their Savior to going off to uh, to Christian college or, or just studying uh, to be good lay people in a church and uh, and the Lord's truly blessing there I also mentioned real briefly that we have a, a ministry in Honduras as well we have a children's home there we have 23 children in that ministry and we're also in a building project there we're building a a bigger a bigger cottage there it's a 14,000 square foot Foot cottage that's going to hold about 36 children in addition to the 23 that we have so that should be completed in the next few months and so that's exciting as well Honduras is a very poor country it's the second poorest country in the world and uh, the devastation that you would see there from poverty is just really I, I can't even put to description in words what that's like and so uh, pray for that ministry as well and uh, and uh, if you want more information definitely look up look up our website but tonight I'll be uh, out there by our table and and uh, would love to meet every one of you if I haven't got to meet you yet um, and love to answer any questions that you have about our ministry and also
also don't be afraid after the service. Come talk to the children. Ask them the questions as well. They live there. They breathe it. So they could answer many questions uh, better than I could uh, even. So young people, why don't you come on up? And as they're making their way up, uh, we'll have just uh, a couple introductions here that uh, traveling with us in addition to the children. We'll have a few staff with us. So we have um, Kate and Isaac over here. And uh, yeah, they're standing there. And uh, Isaac and Kate are uh, what we call relief house parents. And so they help cover the boys dorm and the girls dorm uh, for days off. And uh, if you could imagine, like I said, if you were in charge uh, of a boys dorm that has about 20 or maybe 25 children, don't you think you might need a day off every once in a while? And so that's what they do. They jump in there and they help. They've been with us for a couple of years doing a great job. Uh, Isaac was a youth pastor uh, prior to coming to Hope. Next to them is Nellie. And uh, Nellie is, uh, has been on staff for almost eight years. And she works in the nursery and the daycare. So she helps with the little ones we were talking about. She's there to help them, teach them their alphabet and their colors and get them ready for pre-K four. And she does a great job with that. And uh, interesting about Nellie is that she was actually a child in the home for five years. And so she came to Hope Children's Home when she was 14 and uh, finished with us and just felt like the Lord would have her to stay on a staff. And she's been there for almost eight years and doing a great job. The next to her is my wife, Mandy. Mandy is the graphic designer, and so she designs the newsletters, all the printed material you'll see in the back, our website, social media. That's kind of her, uh, her thing. She does a great job with that. And then I'm Matt Higgins, and I'm the administrative director, and my wife and I have been on staff for uh, almost 13 years, and so the Lord is blessed there. There's our introductions. Real quick, I have uh, just a few things that draw your attention to at the back table. Um, we have some, some resources back there. You're welcome to check these out. This particular one is uh, written by a friend of ours from Florida. His name's Sean. Sean grew up without a dad, and uh, he uh, knows what it's like to be raised by a single mother. And so he wrote a couple devotional books. This one's for girls. There's also one in the back for boys. And it's just a 30-day devotional book geared toward um, young people being raised without a father in their home. It's a, it's a good resource for you. We have some CDs back there. Um, there's a few others out there. And I think maybe some of the songs that we sing tonight will be on some of those CDs. And you can see the ladies for those if you're interested in. Then we also have a stack of newsletters back there. And uh, we send these out every other month. And uh, we put a lot of pictures in there so that we don't have to do a lot of writing. It's a little secret that we came up with. And uh, we, we just uh, uh, send these out to folks, not to ask for money or beg for money and things like that, but we just want people to know what we're doing and what's going on down in Tampa. So it's a great way to, to keep track of us and keep up with us. We put pictures of the kids when they're having birthdays, if you wanted to drop them a birthday card or something. And, and so it's just a, a neat way for you to stay in touch with us. If you're interested in getting that sent to your home, Home, it's really simple. Um, at the back we have these little cards. Um, they're on clipboards. Just grab one of the clipboards and uh, sign up for it. We won't flood you with a bunch of junk. Like I said, about every other month we send those out. And so uh, we'll put you on our newsletter uh, sign up list. And so does anyone currently get that sent to their home? I doubt it. We've never been here before. So, um, so how many of you would say, I think I'll sign up for that? Okay, let me get a couple hands. All right, so make sure you go see the ladies in the back and they'll get you signed up on that. And then we also have our prayer card. And uh, please, if you get a chance, run by and just grab one of these prayer cards. And do remember to pray for us. It's so important. You know, we, uh, uh, we have uh, nearly 40 staff. We have 88 children in Tampa. We have 23 children in Honduras. And it takes a lot of finances to be able to fund our ministry. And I wish we could do it without the finances. Um, but as you raise your family, you understand there's just expenses that goes along with it. Um, but uh, equally or more importantly than the finances is folks praying for us. And, you know, if we had all the money in the world but no one praying for us, we wouldn't have been uh, here 49 years. We just shut down a long time ago. And so uh, please pray for us. Partner with us in prayer. Remember, you know, you may not know specifically what the needs are at Hope and what we're going through, um, but the Lord does. And so uh, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we sure covet your prayers with us. Well, uh, let's get the young people singing. And uh, I think I've done enough talking and hopefully that's all the, the talking I'll do for a little while. We'll hear the young people sing a few songs as well as share their testimonies. <laughs> 